Hi everyone, George Cow here. Wanted to let you know that I'm making a big life transition. Uh, actually, just in next week, in less than a week from now, I am moving to a new country. So I have lived in the United States uh, since I was seven. Came from Taiwan originally. Most of my extended family is still in Taiwan. And I've lived here in California, basically, for, for all my life since then. So for about 40, 40 years, I've lived here. In San Francisco, I've lived for 20 years. And uh, next week, I am moving to Mexico. Why am I moving? I'm, I'm moving with my wife and uh, my dog and cat. Uh, so, you know, the whole family is moving. Uh, we are moving because, well, uh, starting about five years ago, I started researching cheaper places to live in the world, um, cheaper and, uh, you know, my, life, my, my, my wife likes warmer places, so warmer than San Francisco, but not too warm, not too hot. Definitely, we don't like humid heat. So we've been researching a lot. Um, I just got the ping because uh, someone is coming to get some, some furniture. We still have quite a bit of furniture left. Not, not that much. I think it's manageable by this point. But we've been using Facebook Marketplace a lot. And if you've never used Facebook Marketplace to sell things or buy things, it's definitely worth trying. We, we have met a lot of nice people. There have also been quite a few scam artists. That's one of the things you'll learn as you start using Facebook Marketplace is if anybody seem if you're selling something and anybody seems um, really eager to get your Venmo information before they've learned much about your product, it's probably a scam. Or if they want to learn about your Zelle, Z-E-L-L-E -L -L -Z -E -L -L -E info, which is a banking type thing, it's probably a scam. If, uh, if, if it's a low price item and they want to see your text, your, your cell phone pretty quickly, it's probably a scam. Uh, I don't know. They probably want to send you some, some you know, unsavory pictures or something like that, um, or savory pictures. Uh, but anyway, I, I, I. But when the, when it's not a scam, um, people actually are quite quite nice, and uh, it's 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 a it's an interesting experience to, you know, to sell things personally because it's like you experience, um, you know. Uh, you know, capitalism or commerce firsthand and with strangers, right? Like these people, you know, we may never see each other again, but we, we exchange money and, and product and, and everyone's nice to each other. And it actually is quite a positive experience. Uh, just talk, having a nice conversation with a stranger doing business or just selling something, exchanging it's quite a nice experience. I think this is the best of capitalism. You know, there are many, many issues with capitalism. I think this is not one of them. And this is, this is how, how it's supposed to be, right? Someone saying, oh, this is worth 20. This is worth 40. This is worth 150 or whatever, you know? So, um, so back to why I'm moving. Um, so I really have been thinking about uh, moving to a cheaper place, warmer place for, for five years. I even have a YouTube video where I analyzed uh, on this, I researched different countries, put a spreadsheet together, and then made a YouTube video sharing my my insights. And one of the top places, one of the top countries in terms of safety, cost, internet access, good for expats, ex, expats meaning expatriates, people moving from one country of origin to another and living there as a foreigner. Uh, one of the best was Mexico. Um, other countries that were good were including, uh, gosh, I don't remember now, but you know there are some Southeast Asian countries like Malaysia, Thailand, places like that. Um, there was, you know, Ecuador came up highly, Colombia, uh, especially the Medellin area. So I, I researched all this back in 2018, and we just never made the move because we were quite comfortable here. But it was really during the pandemic that things started to change. Um, I think our, our view of politics started to change. Um, we got, my wife and I got more tired of the, what we consider to be very restrictive policies in California. 
masks and lockdowns and and you know things like that so we we looked for a country that where we could be more free essentially more uh less government restriction and um i think mexico does qualify mexico of course has its own problems its own bureaucracy and the cartel is embedded with the government and all that stuff but one of the common uh misconceptions about mexico is it's it's dangerous and you know what i i don't mind about that misconception because if more americans and canadians australians or europeans move to mexico then all of our costs will, will will rise in mexico uh but it's not it's not dangerous it's it's a uh, anyway that's just it's a great grand myth uh that it's dangerous and again um you can believe that if you want it just keep the costs uh lower in mexico for for for, for the first expats there are obviously places in Mexico, just like there are places in the United States that are dangerous to live in. I mean, I, I don't know if there's any school shootings in Mexico like there are in the United States or public shootings. Anyway, um, and people say, what about the cartels? The cartels are embedded with the government. It, the cartels are like, the. it's kind of like the um, corporate, you know, corruption here. The cartels don't want anything to do with you unless you're selling stuff that they sell. I'm not planning to sell drugs or guns or anything like that. So cartels want cartels want peace in society so they can continue doing their thing. And you know, we want you know, most citizens want peace. And so the cartels just fight amongst each other, of course, and that's sad. And and but citizens are are kept at, you know, they want to keep us peaceful and you know they run business cartels run businesses too and you know it's whatever it's like you know, not going to run into them on a on a daily basis especially in certain certain um regions where it's much more exp expats live there and very peaceful anyway so we visited um we've been watching a lot of youtube videos about expats living in mexico we've been watching for a couple of years youtube wonderful place to go and research places you want to move to and and search expats in that country or expats in that state or province and you'll you'll get a lot of people who are very nice and make videos about what their life is like there what their costs are like and what and so we've been watching lots of youtube videos and finally we got comfortable about hey let's go let's go make a trip so back in february we made a trip to mexico and we loved it we went to two places that um we were thinking about one place was called queretaro q u e R O, you know, R K E R E, T A R O, Querétaro, Q U E starts with, and uh, it's like a, a small mid medium city, and it's got all the, you know, amenities of California, San Francisco, essentially the same. You know, we've got, they've, they've got a Costco, H E B, Walmart, you know, all the major chains are there. It's, it's, it's very, it's, it wouldn't be any different. <laughs> very, very quite similar to living here, essentially, except at, you know, at least 33% to 50% off living expenses. So it was much, much cheaper. Weather is still very nice um, year round, uh, not too hot, you know, and definitely not too cold. Um, so that's one place and, uh, we really enjoyed it. We loved the people we met there. And then the other place we went to is the Lake Chapala region. So I have a lake behind, this is, this is not the, the real lake. This is the AI generated lake, but, uh, Lake Chapala region is, um, is, Lake Chapala is the largest lake in Mexico and it's next to, it's 45 minutes from a uh, half hour, 45 minutes from Guadalajara which is the second largest city in Mexico. So um, also second largest city means it has all the amenities of any modern first world city, you know, amazing shopping malls and fashion centers and, you know, universities and cultural things and all the kinds of food in the world. And of course the Walmarts, the Costco's, the HEBs, all of them are there as well. Um, so there's, you know, it, so we decided to move to the Lake Chapala area. We visited both places. Cadeta was wonderful as well, but um, I just felt like my heart was captured by the Lake Chapala region. And so we're moving there. It's it's high elevation, which means it's it's not as hot as most pla many places in Mexico. So year round, it's uh, somewhere around you know forty five Fahrenheit on the lowest to you know eighty five 
Fahrenheit at the highest. So it's pretty, pretty mild year round, very good weather. And um, we, we loved the people of Mexico. That's one of the things we, I, I grew up in Southern California in, in Los Angeles, Orange County area, where there's a tremendous amount of racism towards Mexicans, at least when I was growing up, there, there, there was. So I, I didn't know any better growing up. That's, I was surrounded by racism with, about Mexicans, and that's all I knew. Um, you know, of course, and I haven't met that many Mexicans in my life. So it's not like I'm trying to be racist or whatever, or it just, I try not to be obviously, but that's just always been my upbringing. So went to Mexico, the hardest working people, you know, the most um, civil, compassionate, family oriented, hardworking people, some of the, some of the best people I've ever met, you know, um, and yeah, so it was a wonderful surprise. And um, we've already got a temporary residency visa and uh, that just took some application and they needed to see that we had enough money. So we weren't going to be a drain on Mexican society. And they, it was nice to, for them to know that we were going to work virtually, work from home. Uh, so we're not going to take Mexican jobs. Ironic, <laughs> ironic. Again, I grew up in Southern California. We were afraid of Mexican ta Mexicans taking American jobs, right? You know, Mexicans are also afraid of Americans taking Mexican jobs when we move there. So uh, it was, you know, embassy experience, Mexican embassy in the U.S. Um, was was pleasant. Uh, it was not too hard to get a residency visa. And so we're going to be able to live there um, long term. And then eventually, after a couple of years, we can get become permanent, permanent residents there. And um, the hardest part of all this has been decluttering our life. We've lived here for 20 years, accumulated a lot of stuff. Um, and But not just that, but we, we have only moved the United States all our lives, my wife and I. So we had a lot of stuff moved from earlier parts of our life here. So it's like our garage was storing a lot of you know photos and mementos from when we were kids. And so just like decluttering all that, you know, scanning thousands of photos, it's helpful to have a good scanner. <laughs> it wasn't that expensive, like 50 bucks or whatever, but it's so useful. It scans thousands of photos, all our, my wife's client files all scanned in, like everything's scanned in into the cloud now so we can recycle, you know, get rid of. Um, and th so it's really been, the hardest part has been detachment from stuff, detachment from old photos, family photos, you know, trusting that the um, cloud version of the photos will be good enough. And, you know, in uh, the not too distant future, you know, photo photo apps like Google Photos will have AI upscaling of, you know, grainy old photos into, you know, really good life-size photos. I mean, really good realistic photos. Uh, anyway, so, um, yeah, that's been the hardest thing. And our relationship has grown, has had to grow a lot because of that. And one thing we wish we did earlier was to start selling our furniture and things months and months early in advance instead of in the final month. We've had to frantically try to, you know, fire sale of our furniture for $20 for this amazing thing that cost us, you know, $800. It's $20 now, you know, that kind of thing happening a lot now. And, uh, or, or donating a lot of things, giving, trying to give it away. We should have started that process months ago. Um, I should have taken a month off from work, but instead I was only taking one week off from work, which is next week. I, I, I try to carve out a couple of days off from work uh, this week, but we're moving next Wednesday. And I'm, so next week is my week off of work, one week to move, immigrate to a new country. So um, just a couple of lessons. So another thing is like, there are professional organizers in your town. I wish we had gotten started and be, been willing to pay the three thousand, five thousand dollars. I mean, my wife is very frugal, so we weren't, we didn't go through with it. But I wanted to do it, and I kind of wish we did. Three thousand, five thousand, whatever. It's it's worth it to save <laughs> some relationships, a lot of relationship stress, and a lot of you know, personal and emotional stress and things like that. So. Um, uh, one second here. Um, uh, so, uh, sorry, my, my wife is calling, so I better I better get going now. Anyway, I hope this is interesting. Um, if any questions, you can comment below. I'll obviously still be running my business from 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 there. And uh, time zone shift. That was the other thing I wish I had thought through a bit better. 
the time zone shift means the the year long programs I'm committed to means I have to like work at a different hours and things like that when I'm there. So anyway, uh, that's the latest update. I hope this has been interesting in some way and inspiring some of you to to consider something like this. And uh, I wish you well. And um, I'll see you when I'm in Mexico. Uh, when I make another video in, in a couple of weeks. See you soon.